All right, welcome to episode 11. This is the episode where we're going to get into recording vocals. Going to be a lot of stuff in this episode, um, and I'll try and get it done as quick as possible. Might be two parts, I don't know. This might just be part one. First thing you need when you're uh, going to record a vocal is someone who can sing. Bottom line is if someone cannot sing very well, you're never going to get a record good recording of them. So, I mean, that's stating the obvious, but you'd be surprised what I've been through in my career. Someone coming in to do a vocal and... Yeah. Anyway, so let's get on with it, eh? The vocal microphone, what do you use? Beginners, okay, you're not going to have some $3,000 microphone. If you do, great for you. But more than likely, you're going to have a microphone that's not that expensive. When I started out with my uh, studio 20-some-odd years ago in my home, I bought this microphone here. It's a Rode NT2. I think this was about 600 bucks. Today, what you can get for 600 bucks blows this microphone away. So uh, that's uh, the good news for you, anyway. Bottom line, uh, this is a dual pattern microphone. It has two options. This pattern here, it's hard to tell. That's a cardioid pattern. This pattern here, omni pattern. We have a, uh, a switch here that, that indicates a high pass filter. Switched in this direction, this microphone has the ability to roll off some low end. In the middle, the microphone is flat. And then pushed in this direction, we see minus 10 dB. All right, that's a pad. We will be using this Rode microphone. And let's get started. All right, in the uh, first scenario of recording a lead vocal, gonna assume that um, there's only one person in the room. That person has to be the engineer, the singer, and get everything done. We know, doing this lead vocal, we're gonna be wearing some headphones. The headphones will be plugged into the audio interface. We're gonna be using the interface I normally use, this Apollo X8, uh, because it's easier for me. So in order to uh, have enough slack on the headphones, don't want to plug them into the audio interface and walk around and find ourselves with too short of a cable, we're gonna use a headphone extension cable. You can buy these at Amazon. They're female TRS on one end, and then they're male TRS on the other. This one's like 20 feet long. These are guaranteed to break. The human race is incapable of making a headphone extension cable that is durable. I don't know why that is, but they're cheap. This is probably the 20th one I've owned in the past five years. They last about six months. So anyway, we plug the headphones in through the extension cable, and now we have plenty of slack. So as we're performing the vocal over here, we get, after we get ourselves set up and working, I'll have a mouse and a keyboard here so I can sing, and then I can go over here and work if I need to at the table. Okay, setting up the microphone uh, in relationship to the singer. I want to sing this song about this far away from the mic, about a foot, okay, maybe a little further. Pop filters, you see these on TV, all these, all these singers in the videos with the pop filter, and they're right up on the mic and they're doing this thing. The pop filter is never a bad idea. If you're going to use one, you can get it about four or five inches in front of the microphone, okay. The idea of this is to eliminate issues with air hitting the diaphragm and causing a lot of low frequencies. That's a little high. There we go. About right there. This way, hopefully, any resonance that comes off of your singer, the mic is picking up, okay? And if you're in a decent enough room to be able to get this far away from a microphone, it's gonna work out fine. I can tell you I have this microphone on a cardioid pattern. I don't have any high pass roll off and I don't have any pad. All right, I'm in the third channel of my interface. It's a phantom powered mic, so we're gonna give it phantom power right there. And then we're gonna see the amplitude. So now I'm gonna talk into it a little bit. And I'm gonna re-angle it here so I can look over at the, la 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 la, just make them, making the blah blah blah, kind of the amplitude I'd be making. You know, you don't want it to be too hot but you don't want it to be too low. It's like the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Turn that up a little bit. And now let's talk now uh, a little bit more. Hello, there we go, that's about right. Okay, I'm gonna go with that as a, as a general level. Now that's the audio interface right there that I just adjusted that. 
in that particular piece of software. It was no different than turning the uh, knob on the front panel. Okay, so I'm just doing it in software to give you an idea of what's happening there. So now here's the DAW that we're recording in. And you see I've got it selected on input three, so it's seeing the microphone. If I get up on the mic, you'll see it gets louder. Now, let's look at the inputs on the DAW. You see there's a, two mics right now. The one on the left is the mic I'm using for recording just in the room. This track here where the uh, cursor is pointed, that's the microphone I'm going to be singing through and recording the airplane going over. So I have decided to put a little compression on this vocal. Okay, so this is what the compressor looks like. If I'm singing, I want to grab a little bit of compression. Something happening here. I'm not warmed up. I'm not trying to sing. I'm not trying to perform here. This is all technical stuff that I'm doing. So we've got a basic level and we've got a little bit of compression and it looks like our level is about right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the track and see how loud it is. And i got to get the right blend between what I need to hear in the headphones with my voice and what I need to hear from the track. Here's the track we're recording on. Let's roll the track here. And I can talk right now and hear myself. And uh, right now I, I know I want to hear my vocal louder and the track lower. So the easiest way to do that for me is to do this. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to go sit down at the desk because it's easy to sit down at the desk. I'm going to take all the elements in the song except for the vocal. This right here is a VCA, it's a master fader. I can control the whole blend that I've got put together with one fader. So anyway, I'm going to lower that. So I'm going to turn up the output on the interface. Going to the headphones. Okay, so now I've got a louder blend of the microphone. going down and I can talk and that's not too bad so right there this is the actually the blend I've got in my headphones that you're hearing right now that's making it comfortable for me so there you go that's getting a blend in the headphones versus the track an easy way of doing it is having one master fader of of the track you pull it down and it doesn't pull down the level of the vocal and it allows me to control the balance between the two elements. We can get to our mouse and our keyboard and if I need to get to this desk I can get there quickly I can sit down and listen to something that I've done I'm just showing you the ergonomics of this thing okay Something happened in here. What is it? Stop. Is. Children, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Now, if I want to go play that back, I can play it back. There's something happened in here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware Think it's time we stop That's the ergonomics of it. It gives you an idea of being able to stand up and sing and get a vocal if you're by yourself. All right, after laying down a vocal, recording it, there's no use in continuing to record unless you know for sure that the sound you're getting is what you want and what you need. So I'll typically lay something down real quick and then I'll go in and solo it and make sure that there's nothing wrong with it because I'm not in a control room. I, I'm the one person in the room. I have to get all this figured out before I commit to actually trying to perform a song. So what I do is I come over and I solo the track. Now let's just see if there's any technical issues. 
There's something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware I have no problem with that. I think that's just fine. I don't hear any leakage that's a problem. There's no tonal stuff that's a problem. I'm about the right distance from the microphone. The level's okay. It's malleable. I can make it brighter. I can make it darker. I can make it beefier. I can thin it out. It's a good track. So now I can make a commitment to, okay, I like what I'm doing. I'm going to forge ahead. If I didn't like it, I'd figure out what I didn't like about it, and I'd change things. It, I might not like the tonality of the mic. I might change microphones. Uh, I might think that uh, it'd be better to put in a high-pass filter on the mic. I can make decisions only after I've heard, soloed what I've done, and then now I'll, I'll roll it and see if it lays into the track. There's something happening here What is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware Yeah, it's gonna lay in fine. If I get a good performance, everything will be great. So, I'd forge ahead at this point. I mentioned in another episode uh, about when you're tracking a vocal, how sometimes you can get away without wearing headphones and having your speakers up at a low volume and your microphone pointed away from the speakers. And so that's what we've got right here. Microphone's looking this way, speakers are blowing this way, I'm gonna be hitting this way. This microphone is an SM7, it has a pretty tight pattern on it. So that's gonna be uh, beneficial to us. So I'm not even gonna monitor my voice here. I'm just gonna get, a, I got a level, this is the channel here. It's the third channel on the uh, interface. And then we're going to go into Studio One. Let me see, I've got a little bit of compression on it. I might need more compression than I want. Let's take a look at that real quick. Something happened in here. It's a little bit more than I want, I think. I want to raise that threshold a little bit. Something happened in here. What's our ratio? Seven. No, oh, that's too high. Let's put that lower to three. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun. Okay, I like that. That looks about right. Let me get that out of the way. So, we're not going to monitor this. I'm muting it. I'm not even going to hear it. It's not going to come out of the speakers. What we're going to do here is just roll the sucker, and I'm going to sing along with the track and record listening through the speakers. And then we'll see how much bleed we get. There's something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear I'm telling, okay, so let's just see how much bleed we got. All right, let's solo that track. Here we go. Let's see what it's, how it sounds. Go ahead and get down to where we hear a little bit there. There's something happening here what it is ain't exactly clear there's a man with a gun oh yeah for for bleed that's totally acceptable you know just a little bit you'd have more bleed than that if you had a band playing in a room and a guy was cutting a vocal on this mic so that's one way of getting away with it. let's uh turn the speakers up a little bit okay let's go down to the next verse here what the heck is the next verse there's battle lines being drawn that's what it is okay here we go Battle lines being drawn are getting so much resistance from behind time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Now let's see how much bleed we had on that. Solo it. More bleed, huh? There's battle lines being drawn. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. But in the grand scheme of things, if we unmute that and play it in the track, let's see how bad it is. There's battle lines being drawn. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. 
nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Young people speak in their mind. Now, you know what I hear there? Uh, in the previous episode, we talked about proximity. I'm a little too close to the microphone. I'd rather be back a little bit. Let's do, go down to the third verse. So I'm going to back off on the mic a little bit. What a field day for the heat. Think it's time we stop. Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Okay, let's solo that and see how much bleed we got, huh? What a field day for the heat. A thousand people in the street are singing songs and a carrying sign. I'm hearing a little bit too much compression, you know. I'd back off on the compression a little bit, you know, so I'd go go to the compressor. Let's look at that compressor threshold. Let's raise the threshold a little bit so we aren't squeezing it so much. I don't want to hear that much compression. See, that's what happens. As you record, you go, oh, wait a minute. You listen back, you go, oh, wait a minute. I, don't, I want to change that and get this to sound the way I want it to sound. So you got to get things dialed in before you make the commitment. You don't want to trap yourself in having things not sounding the way you want them to sound. Let's uh, listen to that, how it lays in the track anyway. What a field day for the heat. A thousand people in the street singing songs and a carrying signs. Mostly say hooray for our side. Okay, so there it is. You can have your speakers on and not wear headphones and get away with it. Uh, if you have a microphone that has a tight enough pattern. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a two-part episode. So we've covered uh, what it's like to be by yourself, recording by yourself, getting a vocal, making sure your ergonomics are intact, how to set up your microphone, microphone considerations, all that kind of good stuff. In part two, we're going to talk about uh, backing vocals, having more than one person in the room, getting two singers, three singers, four singers recorded properly. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button and continue watching the Home Studio for Beginners course here on Record and Mix Repeat. I'm your host, Rusty Smith. Thank you for watching. Thank you.